Hey guys, welcome back to Dude We Can Fix It. Today we're going to be diagnosing and fixing a fuel related problem with this 2006 Chevy Duramax. This is a diesel engine and what happens is when it's just sitting here idling, it will randomly just stall out. It won't start until you prime the hand priming pump by hand and then you can start it back up. So we're going to figure out why it is randomly stalling on its own when it's running and then why it also doesn't want to start back up after it's been sitting overnight. So let's pop the hood and check it out. All right, so to get a little better access to the fuel filter housing, I'm going to remove this intake air elbow off of here. It's just two screw clamps on here. So I'll use a flathead screwdriver to loosen these up. All right, so when you look in here, first thing that you can notice is that the top of this filter housing is wet. This is your hand primer pump. And when you pump this, it actually seeps out around the base right here. And there's actually an entire puddle of diesel over here on this side. So if you have a lot of diesel around here, and look right here, you can see diesel is running down the filter itself and dripping off the bottom, then you know that you have a leak in this area and that needs to be taken care of. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove this electrical connector. Just wiggle and pull it off tuck it away and then I'm going to use a T20 Torx bit inside of a quarter inch socket on my quarter inch drive ratchet here. I'm going to take out this one screw back here that's holding in this other wire. There we go, we have both wires disconnected. Next, I'm going to remove these two hose clamps and take these two hoses off and move them out of the way. All right, so I'm going to use a 12 millimeter wrench to take these two bolts loose, and then we'll be able to take this entire housing and filter completely out. Now that we have both screws out, all we have left is this one electrical connector in the bottom to take loose. Pull that out. I'm going to go ahead and drain this filter out. I'm gonna take this bottom plug off out here, drain this into a container, and then we'll bring this to our workbench. All right, so now that we have the fuel filter and fuel filter housing on our workbench, I need to remove the fuel filter, and I got a little can to catch all the fluid that's gonna come out. I'm going to wrap a rag around it. That way I don't scratch up the fuel filter because I'm reusing it. I'm going to use a wrench to unscrew it. And now if you have a hard time getting this loose, you can actually mount this back in the truck, put those two bolts back in, it'll hold it steady for you and you can put a strap wrench or something on it. But these are only supposed to be hand tightened. So you shouldn't have to go through all that. So there is the fuel filter removed from the fuel filter head. So I'm just going to set this in here, there we go. have the filter housing nice and cleaned up we'll go ahead and start taking it apart i'll start by taking these two screws out notice there's one missing that was where the electrical connector was that we took off while it was still in the truck this is a t20 torx bit you'll have to hold this down as it's under some spring pressure now we're going to take out these two t20 torx bit screws So now we're going to take this black piece out. Just be mindful, this is a check ball. It might fall out on you. And then there's also a spring underneath that. As we can see, this O-ring just kind of fell off. It was actually on there like that, which that's all right. We'll go ahead and take it off. Next, we have a small O-ring inside of here. So we'll go ahead and try to remove that with a pick. There it is. If yours is not inside of there, it may be riding on this piece right here. So if you don't see it in there, look on here, go ahead and grab it and pull it off. All right, now we're going to flip this over. We can see that there's a large O-ring here. Pull this one off. 
Then we're going to disassemble our priming pump, take the spring out, take this hold down off of it, and then pull this apart. Here you'll see that you have two large seals on here. The top seal has the larger flat portion facing up, and the bottom seal has the larger flat portion facing down. So now that we have all of our old filter head assembly replaceable pieces removed, we're going to go ahead and get our new stuff here. This is Dorman part 904-124 primer seal kit. Let's take this out the box and see what all we got. Our seals and three new screws for the primer pump on top. So in our seal kit, we have the large O-ring, the two small ones, the two seals that go on the primer pump itself, and we have a new bleeder screw with o-ring so let's go ahead and start installing this we'll use some motor oil to lubricate all the new o-rings before we put them on so that we don't rip or tear them all right so i have me a cap full of 30 weight motor oil you can use whatever motor oil you have laying around this is just to lubricate all of our seals as we put them back in so let's go ahead and start with our primer pump seal i'm going to wipe this down real quick Make sure this is a good clean surface to work on. Now I'm going to grab one of these large seals. I'm going to dip it in some oil, get it nice and lubricated. And then the bottom seal, this uh, side with the flange on it is going to be facing down. Let's go ahead and work that into place. There we go. We got the bottom seal in place. Let's go ahead and lube up and install the top seal. Remember, this one has the flange facing up. So this recess in here is going to be facing towards the top. Once you get them in here, spin them around, make sure that they're not twisted or in the improper orientation. Then we're going to wipe out the inside of this cup, put a little bit of lube in it, and then we're going to install it over these seals. Be careful not to make this seal up top flip over. So take your time. There we go. Now we can set this back on top and set it off to the side. All right, next we'll grab our large O-ring, lube it up and set it on top here. Push it all the way down into place. Now we'll take this large spring, set it in here, and we'll set this entire assembly on top of it. There we go. Now we will use our three new screws that came in the kit to attach the primer pump back to the housing. And now if we remember correctly, this screw right here, we took out on the truck for our electrical connector. So I'm going to go ahead and take this screw back out until we install it back in the truck. All right, so now we're going to use a half inch socket to take out the bleeder screw and install our new bleeder screw. Now we'll go ahead and flip this over, start working on the underside of it. We'll lube up this medium sized O-ring. We'll set it on the center shaft right here. And then we'll lube up our small O-ring and you can either set it on top of this guy right here or you can install it inside of that recess there. And once you get this O-ring either on this peg or in that hole, let's go ahead and grab our ball and our spring. We'll set the spring in and we'll set the ball on top of that. Then we'll line this peg up with that hole and set it in, being careful to keep the ball and spring in place. We'll press it down back into the housing. And then we'll use our two T20 screws to hold this in. All right, don't get these too tight because you don't want to strip them out. Get them snug and then go maybe another eighth to a quarter of a turn. Probably just an eighth being safe here. Make sure that your ball is still there. It's still free to move in and out. And there we go. We have our freshly rebuilt filter housing and primer pump. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the fuel filter while it's sitting here on the bench. 
All right, we'll be careful to make sure the O-ring stays in its proper place while we screw this back together. Here we can see the O-ring popped out on one side, so we're gonna loosen it up and try that again. All right, now check all the way around, make sure that your O-ring is seated and looks the same all the way around. And now we're ready to reinstall this in the truck. All right, now we're going to start reinstalling our fuel filter housing. Let's go ahead and thread both of our bolts in by hand. Then we'll tighten them up with a 12 millimeter wrench. Next, we'll go ahead and hook these two hoses back on and get our clamps back in place. Next, we can't forget about our electrical connector on the bottom. Let's go ahead and plug that back in. And then let's get our wires on the top. All right, so here's our wires. We need to route them to the back side of the fuel filter housing. And we will reinstall them where they were. This black one just pops on to this connector. Then we'll take this other connector and our torque screw and put it in the third slot on the primer bulb. Get that nice and snug. So now that everything's hooked back up, we just need to fill the fuel filter and prime the system, get all this air out of here. So I'm going to loosen up this bleeder screw and I'm going to start pumping this by hand. And you can hear the air coming out of the bleeder screw. You see all the bubbles? That is all the air getting purged from the system right now. All right, now we're getting straight diesel fuel out of here without all the bubbles. Is I'm going to go ahead and screw this bleeder screw back in and tighten it up. Now I'm going to continue to pump this until it's nice and firm. All right, our fuel primer is nice and firm now. This time I'm going to go ahead and reconnect our air duct and then we can go ahead and start the truck up. Do it. Let's just crank this thing up. Might take a second, but I have faith. All right, guys, we got the fuel filter all resealed up with new seals, O-rings, and this truck is running great. We're not having those original problems anymore with it stalling while running or not wanting to start after sitting for a while. So we fixed our fuel leak and we have successfully diagnosed and corrected a fuel related issue with this Chevy Duramax. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something from it. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your bell notifications for future videos. As always, do we can fix it and one more thing guys we just started a new homesteading channel i purchased 27 acres out in the country and so if you have any interest in homesteading developing or being self-sufficient please give us a check out it's called homestead development and i'll leave a link in this i'll leave a link in the descriptions below as always dude we can fix it